Hi, Brent Tech here. Where tech is made simple. So we also get a brand new pair of beta channel builds this week. Build 22621 and 22631.2129, which rolled out with the update. KB5029359. Now, as I've mentioned previously, in effect now, these features being tested in the beta channel are features we could see possibly roll out with our 23H2 feature update for Windows 11 rolling out in the latter months of this year, 2023. Now, before we have a look at the new features and improvements, just an important note, Microsoft says, if you are a new Windows insider joining the beta channel, you will not be offered this update to prevent the possibility of your device getting into a bad state. So just take note of that. And they say that this issue will be fixed in a newer beta channel update soon. So what's new in Ball 22631? Microsoft focusing quite a lot of attention now on Windows Copilot, which is still in preview. And that's in the beta channel now via a controlled feature rollout. And this first preview, Microsoft says, focuses on their integrated UR, user interface experience, with additional functionality coming down the road in future previews. So to use Copilot in this flight, you must have Windows 11 preview build 22631.2129 or higher in the beta channel. And something else to take note of, you also need to have Microsoft Edge version 115.1901.150 or higher. So just take note of that. And over and above that, um, this is also the first preview where you can ask Windows Copilot a range of questions or take actions such as, and Microsoft has just given a couple of examples. So a couple of those examples of questions you can ask are change to dark mode, turn on do not disturb, take a screenshot, summarize this website, write a story about a dog who lives on the moon and so on. So um, mainly focusing on the user interface for Windows Copilot, but as mentioned, you can now ask it those simple range of questions. Moving on to the next, and there's now new text authoring uh, in voice access, where there are now two new experiences to make text authoring easy with voice access, says Microsoft. You can now use correction commands to correct words that are misrecognized by voice access. So some examples would be you can say correct text or correct that to correct a specific piece of text or last dictated text. Uh, the correction window appears with a list of options labeled with numbers, as we can see in the screenshot provided. And you can also say, click number to select any option from the list. If you choose an alternate word from the window, the selected text will be replaced by the word. You can also say, spell that to dictate the correct spelling of the text. So uh, text authoring, there's new text authoring experiences now in voice access, um, which obviously is an accessibility feature. And then sticking with voice access, we did cover this earlier today, but just a quick mention, voice access is now available to use on more areas in Windows. So this is also rolling out to the dev channel and now in the beta channel, which means you can now use voice access to log into your PC and access other areas on the lock screen. And something else to take note of regarding voice access, just a quick recap, there's also a new setting to start voice access before you sign into your PC, which can be toggled on. Um, from the accessibility speech page in the settings now in the beta channel. And the next is also a feature that rolled out as we posted on earlier today, where Microsoft is uh, improving the screencasting experience. Quick recap, um, when doing multitasking activities on your PC, such as often switching between windows to complete a task or using Snap Assist to organize your screen space, Microsoft say they will provide the suggestion to cast via a notification toast. Over and above that, um, they will also now provide inline setup of a PC from within the cast fly out in quick settings with step-by-step -step guidance for users to enable. And two of those, just to mention quickly, are installation of the optional wireless display feature and also discoverability of the PC to other devices via the projecting to this PC settings page. So once again, um, screencasting improvements rolling out now to the beta channel for this week as well. And then something else that's been made available earlier on in the dev channel, which made its way to the beta channel, are presence sensing improvements. So there's a couple of overlapping features here. So obviously some of those earlier features are now making their way into beta, which as mentioned at the start of this video, we could possibly see it roll out with the 23H2 feature update. So um, with the presence sensing improvements, um, PCs with presence sensors that support attention detection, 
Microsoft says they are introducing adaptive dimming. Now your device can um, dim your screen when you look away and undim when you look back. So that's presence sensing improvements, which as I've mentioned previously, Microsoft is giving it quite a lot of attention for supported devices. And you can also enable presence sensing now um, in Windows in the OOBE experience. So that's when you are setting up a new laptop, as an example, um, running Windows 11. Now, some of the changes and improvements uh, in build 22631 are that um, Microsoft says for people logged into a Windows 11 Pro or Enterprise Edition with an AAD account, um, when hovering now over files, such as Word documents under recommended on the start menu, you will see little enhancements now. So you will see the time, the location, you also get a thumbnail and so on. And I did post on this when it was still a hidden feature about a week or two ago. So that's now um, an improvement now in the beta channel for this week. And then something else, um, the notifications have also received a, uh, an overhaul where, they, where notifications will now show a bell uh, in the system tray. And we did cover this uh, last week. When new, when new notifications come through, the bell will colorize based on your system accent color. And when there are no notifications and the clock is visible, the bell will be empty as we can see here on the right hand side. And something else to take note of, notification counts are no longer shown. So you won't actually see the little number on the actual bell when there is a notification that needs your attention, which I actually think is a nice move in the right direction, just one less distraction. And then just a quick mention here, um, there's an update for APR for pinning to uh, your taskbar. And this is included now in this uh, build for preview for the beta channel this week in build 22631. Moving on to the next, there's a bit of a UR update and improvement for the task manager where um, Microsoft says they've updated the settings page to match uh, the look and feel of Windows 11 a little bit more because this has already rolled out to the stable version, but obviously now Microsoft are bringing a couple of more changes. Um, they say this design has a similar look and feel to the settings in Windows 11 and provides a cleaner UR separating categories into different sections, and they will also be enabling this in the dev channel soon. So yeah, we can see a bit of UR changes now for the task manager for that settings page. And just a quick mention regarding the actual settings while we are talking about the settings page. Um, Microsoft says that if location settings are disabled, this is obviously for your date and time, regional settings, if location settings are disabled, a warning is now shown to the user urging you to enable location settings to ensure accurate time zone adjustments as we can see here. Um, yeah, it says enable location permissions for the settings to improve time zone accuracy. So that's now an improvement that's also rolled out uh, to the beta channel for this week. And then just to do uh, three quick mentions um, as to new features and improvements. DevDrive, apparently Microsoft says you can now set up a DevDrive for improving developer workload performance uh, in the beta channel for this week by setting it up in settings, system for developers or via the command line. And then we also get narrator support for Excel where Microsoft says narrator now provides a more um, efficient reading experience while working in Microsoft Excel. And then the last one to mention for today's video, um, there's passwordless experience for Windows Hello for Business that's also been added where enterprise customers, Microsoft says, can now set the enable passwordless experience policy that promotes a user experience on AAD joint machines for core authentication scenarios without requiring a password. And that's more or less what's rolling out when it comes to new features and improvements for this week in the beta channel. And if we just head back quickly to those release notes, we get a couple of fixes, which obviously Microsoft will have to address um, before these features do become available uh, in the next 23H2 feature update. And they've also got a couple of known issues that they will also have to work on in the beta channel uh, before these features do possibly roll out with 23H2. So that's quite a mouthful, quite a lot going on in the beta channel for this week. And thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.